All right. Uh, well, hello, uh, and thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to speak to you today. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Scott Detman, and uh, I lead all of our big data and data science initiatives uh, within Manpower Group. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Manpower Group is the, the world's largest workforce solutions company. Uh, in essence, that means that, that we specialize in putting people into the, into the workforce. Um, essentially, uh, we, we, we put uh, approximately 4.2 million people into the labor force globally each and every week. That's equivalent to uh, the population of Boston uh, every day, every day of the week, seven days a week. So, um, so obviously, in doing that, we, we have a, a great deal of interactions uh, and touch points uh, uh, with, with, with clients, with, uh, with people that we're looking to place, uh, with people looking to hire, uh, with a number of things. So uh, about a year ago, um, Manpower Group, which is located in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so uh, Ken, you know, another Midwestern boy here. Uh, I think it was six degrees when I got on a plane last night, so this, this weather is immaculate to me. Uh, but um, so about a year ago, uh, Manpower Group uh, recruited me out of uh, academia, um, my, my doctoral research on, uh, on decision science and, and specializing in things like big data and data science, um, and, and brought me to Manpower Group to essentially um, be the person to introduce big data into the HR space, into the, the staffing space, into what, uh, what Manpower refers to as the human age. So today, I'd like to talk to you about three, three things in particular here. Um, first is, is the human age, which is, is essentially what at Manpower we define as, as the, the place where we are uh, in terms of the global economy and what that means to big data. Uh, secondly, I want to talk uh, about target areas for application uh, um, of big data within Manpower Group. Um, and, and then lastly, I'll cover a, a few specific examples uh, of some of the things that we've done and some initiatives that, that I've led within Manpower Group uh, and, and for some of our clients. Um, and then hopefully have some time uh, if anyone has questions or anything like that uh, at the end. So to begin with, the, the human age. Um, essentially, the human age refers to the, the need for organizations to, to be more agile, uh, customized, and, and ultimately um, uh, provide greater value faster and better uh, than ever before. Um, so our, our economy is changing, um, and, and as a result, um, this has led to a change in, in the need for, for how we structure our workforce and, and the sort of talent that, that is pursued. Uh, I was actually just having a conversation earlier about, you know, when we think about this, this age of, of, of computing and, and technology, really what we're talking about is, is the age of human innovation, right? These are things that are being driven by human beings. And, and really, it, what Manpower believes uh, uh, firmly is that it's, it's the, the organizations that are able to tap into to the right people and to optimize their talent strategies that are really going to win moving forward. Um, so what this means more particularly in the HR space is that HR leaders have, have had to adapt. Uh, they've had to become experts in, in things that they've never had expertise in before, things like marketing, things like supply chain, and things like strategic development. They've had to focus in a much, in a much more comprehensive or multidisciplinary fashion uh, to be able to optimize talent and optimize workforce uh, in a way that can, that can truly benefit the organization. Um, the, the reason behind this, is, as I alluded to already, is, is, is ultimately because the, the, the rapid pace of technology and innovation and change that we see in our, our global economy is, is, is fundamentally human driven, again, as I alluded to. Um, so so uh, again, the, the companies that, that we see that, uh, that are going to win and that are going to, to have success moving forward are those that have the, those optimized talent strategies. Um, so, so essentially, uh, this means that uh, w within HR, um, uh, uh, the, the HR professionals really need to focus on all of these challenges. So I won't go through each challenge, but, but essentially need to understand that, that the makeup of the workforce uh, is going to, to drive where they go and, and, and how they do things moving forward. Um, and uh, um, to, to, to do this, essentially, uh, what, what companies are, are, are needing to do and what manpower is, is pushing right now is, um, uh, is the companies fundamentally understand um, who, who their employees are, who their clients are, who their customers are, um, what they want, uh, what they need, and, and, and more importantly, and probably most importantly, um, what they're going to do next, right? What we can predict that they will do next. Because if we can see around that corner, 
uh, we, can, we can truly be strategic in the way that we move forward. And the best way to do that, the best way for us to, to accomplish this is, is through leveraging big data. Big data and predictive analytics, data science, and, and, and a variety of different technologies that, that integrate to, uh, to, to accomplish this. Um, and uh, across the, the Manpower Group services and, and solutions, um, uh, we, we approach this in, in many different ways, but it's all driven uh, at its core by big data and predictive analytics. So um, I'll get into some specific examples of, of things uh, about this, but when, when we look at an issue such as talent management or workforce transitions or, or leadership development, we start with this notion of, of what, it, what available information is there. We, we operate almost more, more like detectives um, than, uh, than like technologists. And, and we start with trying to, to, to build a comprehensive view of all of the potential root causes or motivators or factors that lead into the universe of making um, something happen in one of these spaces. And then we go out and we try and con uh, uh, collect as much data as possible. Um, so particularly, I'll, I'll go through a couple of quick case studies here. Um, one of the things that, that we did, one of the first initiatives that I led uh, at Manpower Group was, uh, was, was something that um, we essentially looked at, well, so a, a large part of our, uh, of our, um, of, uh, of our business is, is in looking at uh, managing workforce transitions. What that means is when a large company goes through uh, and does mass layoffs, um, uh, Manpower Group and specifically one of our, uh, our lines of business called Right Management comes in and we help manage that transition for those employees, help retrain them, help them find their next position, help network, help develop new skills, things of that sort. And one of the things that we started to look at doing is, is trying to identify that, uh, which companies would be likely to engage in mass layoffs next. Now, it's not the most heartwarming uh, you know, endeavor, but it, but it certainly is relevant to, to what we do. Um, so, so what I did is I, I started with this notion of, of the mass layoff, and, and I defined that. You know, Ken was re referring to some of these you know, operational definitions and, and things like that, and that's, that's crucial. So we, we first defined that. Then we, we basically c conducted a, uh, a big data analysis and, and, and data science project that, that collected data from, from available external and internal sources, uh, and, and then we built those into predictive models so that we could predict uh, what factors needed to exist or likely would exist that, that would predict mass layoffs to occur. And from that, we could essentially put our salespeople, our, our ops people, in front of uh, um, emerging client opportunities six to 12 months uh, before they happen. Now, this is something that we're starting to offer to, to clients as well, because this doesn't just exist within mass layoffs, but it, it was something that we tackled first. Um, but, but it's an example of, of how we're leveraging big data to do that. Um, another example uh, is engagement and assessment. So a big thing that we do within Manpower Group is, is identifying high potential talent and uh, developing leaders, and we do this for for uh, uh, companies all over the world. And uh, one of the things that, that, that we've done, that there's, there's a, a great deal of research uh, in, in academia and, and uh, in, in the use of assessments and, and identifying high potential talent and, and leadership uh, capabilities and qualities. Um, but one of the things that we started to do is we started to use uh, available external data such as uh, social media data um, and, and data that we could build web bots to, uh, to crawl the internet for and capture on individuals to start to build a more comprehensive, um, uh, you know, uh, um, I guess multidisciplinary view of, of individuals that, that are classified as high potential. Kind of starting from the, from the end and looking at those that have been identified as high potential or looking at high performers and, and trying to fully understand who they are, not just in, uh, on their resume or, or in, in the way that they respond to a caliper assessment or a Hogan assessment, but trying to get a better sense of, of who they are personally and, and, and what they do and what they say and, and, and how they function. And, and this is something that I've, this is a, an initiative that's ongoing right now that I'm leading, um, but, but it's exciting to, to, to start to um, uncover some of the, 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 the interesting similarities that we're finding between uh, high performing individuals uh, and, and some of the, the places that we're finding those. And if you have questions, I can talk a little bit more about that. And then lastly, uh, optimizing job fit. Now, um, I, I don't think uh, anyone in this room would be, would be surprised by the notion that the way that, that uh, the global economy recruits talent, hires talent, and, and, and attempts to retain talent hasn't changed a whole lot in the last 50 years. Um, I, I liken it to the 20-year-old uh, um, you know, the guy who's going out to a bar and he's trying to find a mate, right? Um, he, he has a, a notion in his mind uh, that he, he's interested 
in finding a mate, then he, he uh, sort of develops a, a model of, of what he's looking for, right? What he views as, as attractive and desirable. And then from there, he just goes out and starts fishing, right? He's going to talk to as many people as he can. It's a numbers game. And he's going to hope that his, his judgment is sound. And, you know, if, if things like Match.com or the divorce rate uh, are any indication, um, you know, most people aren't very good at that, right? Um, so what we're essentially trying to do right now, and this is a larger initiative, it's going to be a little bit more long term, um, but we're working on uh, producing uh, essentially job fit algorithms. So we're, we're looking at taking what Match.com does to, to pair people uh, and, and, and find, you know, find your soulmate, right? And, and do that within the job space and trying to identify those things that are between the lines that, that you would typically never see and, and, and try to understand the nuances about the candidate uh, and about the employer, about the hiring manager, about, about the environment and build a, a predictive model to, to, to make those two things meet and, and, and do so on a regular basis. So um, uh, one, I guess, uh, last thing here, um, just, just because some, some, uh, some talk uh, uh, there's already been some talk about some of the tools that are used. Um, I personally um, uh, heavily rely on R. Uh, it's, a, it's a statistical analysis tool. It's open source. Um, it's, it's fairly difficult to learn, um, but it's, it's incredibly flexible and it's free, which is nice. Um, uh, but, but in addition to that, we use Hadoop. Um, in vivo uh, is something that we've used for, uh, for text analytics and, and, and trying to quantify you know, more qualitative data. Um, and, and then for, for visualizations and, and things like that, because, you know, uh, um, that's always, that's an important part of telling the story. Um, uh, we, we typically use Tableau. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions about any of those products uh, or any of those, those, uh, those services. Any questions for me? Okay. Thank you very much.